Now we know what we're seeing is happening, but what's really causing it? I just started talking about aggressive water. Well, we know in the industry for many years that there's been some controversy on this. Early on, back in the 70s, some research started uh, taking place when this spot etching was really first being noted. Uh, right off the bat, that uh, etching contributed to aggressive pool water, where the water is actually etching and dissolving away this soluble Portlandite or calcium hydroxide. But over the years, other theories have come up, and that's why I'm talking today, is we want to actually go through all these and understand exactly what it is and what it isn't that's happening, fact from fiction. But let's visit some of these theories and understand maybe what possibly can be happening here. Well, first off, we've heard that possibly supplemental lubricating water could be a contributing factor. What is that? That is water that is actually added by the plaster during the troweling process to lubricate its trowel to create a slick, uh, pool plaster. That is one uh, contributing factor. They said the adding of the water causes uh, the ability for the spot etching. Uh, too much calcium chloride is another one of them. Calcium chloride is a setting um, additive that's mixed into the plaster to help it dry quicker. And they think that maybe that calcium chloride has some contributing factor to the spot etching. Uh, other theory is, is if you fill the pool too soon, that that can cause the spot etching too by getting water on the product quicker than it should be. The other one is excessive trowel passes, or some people might call that improper workmanship, where the, the product is troweled over and over again or repeatedly by the uh, finisher more than it should be, causing a weakening or uh, the potential for it to spot edge. Uh, we've even heard some people say, especially in the colored finishes, that when you mix pigments and calcium chloride together, that could be an issue also. We're going to visit that. Uh, also, we've heard that too high of a water to cement ratio, that when the... Uh, Mixer man adds too much water and makes the plaster too thin, that that could cause the spot etching. And then lastly, we've heard uh, probably the most predominant theory is aggressive pool water. Uh, the swimming pool water itself or the environment that this plaster in is the major culprit. Let's jump in this and take a look. Now, why do we come up with our conclusion? Well, over the years, uh, there's been a lot of research done on um, swimming pool plaster in general and spot etching. I've been involved with a lot of that. From early on in the 80s, we started doing independent research uh, with a lot of different swimming pools to try to recreate this phenomenon, not just to understand what's causing it, but also for solution. We decided to do some third-party research on there, and we went to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, and we started a uh, pool center there. We actually built uh, 12 pools and four spas and started the National uh, Research Center for swimming pools up at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. With that, we formed a team of researchers, both from the industry and academia, where we actually uh, started doing different uh, plaster processes and different pools with different uh, water scenarios. But really coming into research, it's important to understand that we have to come up with scientific, factual, documentable, reproducible um, results. and. When you go into research, as we know, uh, a lot of people come in with an agenda or presupposition, um, depending where you're coming from. Well, I'm a pool plaster, and I certainly have a presupposition from a pool plaster. So how are we going to go into research and understand what's causing this scientifically and get rid of that presupposition? So what we did is we had a collaboration of industry experts. Um, on the advisory board at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, which I chaired, and on the research committee, we included uh, IPSA members, Independent Pool and Spa Service Association uh, members. We had a, um, a degreed engineer from IPSA, a pool service man, on the committee. UPA, United Poolmen's Association, we had a degreed engineer who was a pool man on the committee. We had material manufacturers being represented, both in test kits that measure the water and the materials that are used. We had pool builders involved, and we even had a few plasters and academia to together combine all our knowledge, get rid of our agendas, and try to find factually what's going on in all these pools. And we were very successful. It was a lot of fun being involved with this. As a matter of fact, all of our protocols voted on were unanimous. It was so obvious what we we're looking for. And then when we came up with conclusions and things started to gel and we're finding out what's going on, every single vote that we took on conclusions was unanimous by the committee, except for one. We had one time one person had one abstention, but it was that crystal clear what was happening. So it's safe to say that it was clearly a um, industry research project 
that was um, taken on by the whole industry with everybody's interest uh, thoroughly understood and uh, respected.